In mathematics, a projective space can be thought of as the set of lines through the origin of a vector space V. The case is when V R2 and V R3 are the real projective line and the real projective plane, respectively, where R denotes the field of real numbers, R2 denotes ordered pairs of real numbers, and R3 denotes ordered triplets of real numbers. The idea of a projective space relates to perspective, more precisely to the way an eye or a camera projects a 3D scene to a 2D image. All points that lie on a projection line i.e., a line of sight intersecting with the entrance pupil of the camera, are projected onto a common image point. In this case, the vector space is R3 with the camera entrance pupil at the origin, and the projective space corresponds to the image points. Projective spaces can be studied as a separate field in mathematics, but are also used in various applied fields, geometry in particular. Geometric objects, such as points, lines, or planes, can be given a representation as elements in projective spaces based on homogeneous coordinates. As a result, various relations between these objects can be described in a simpler way than is possible without homogeneous coordinates. Furthermore, various statements in geometry can be made more consistent and without exceptions. For example, in the standard Euclidean geometry for the plane, two lines always intersect at a point except when parallel. In a projective representation of lines and points, however, such an intersection point exists even for parallel lines, and it can be computed in the same way as other intersection points. Other mathematical fields where projective spaces play a significant role are topology, the theory of Lie groups and algebraic groups, and their representation theories. Topic. Introduction As outlined above, projective space is a geometric object that formalizes statements like, "...parallel lines intersect at infinity." For concreteness, we give the construction of the real projective plane P2 R in some detail. There are three equivalent definitions The set of all lines in R3 passing through the origin 0, 0, 0. Every such line meets the sphere of radius 1 centered in the origin exactly twice, say in P equals x, y, z and its antipodal point minus x, minus y, minus z. P2 R can also be described as the points on the sphere S2, where every point P and its antipodal point are not distinguished. For example, the point 1, 0, 0 red point in the image is identified with minus 1, 0, 0 light red point, etc. Finally, yet another equivalent definition is the set of equivalence classes of R3 0, 0, 0, i.e. 3 space without the origin, where 2 points P. Topic. X, Y, Z and P. X, Y, Z are equivalent IFF. There is a non-zero real number lambda such that p equals lambda p, i.e., x equals lambda x, y. Topic lambda y z lambda z. The usual way to write an element of the projective plane, i.e., the equivalence class corresponding to an honest point x, y, z in R3, is x, y, z. The last formula goes under the name of homogeneous coordinates. In homogeneous coordinates, any point x, y, z with z does not equal zero is equivalent to x, z, y, z, one. So there are two disjoint subsets of the projective plane, that consisting of the points x, y, z equals x, z, y, z, 1 for z does not equal 0, and that consisting of the remaining points x, y, 0. The latter set can be subdivided similarly into two disjoint subsets, with points x, y, 1 to 0 and x, 0 to 0. In the last case, x is necessarily non-zero, because the origin was not part of P2 R. This last point is equivalent to 1, 0 to 0. 
Geometrically, the first subset, which is isomorphic not only as a set, but also as a manifold, as seen later, to R2, is in the image the yellow upper hemisphere without the equator, or equivalently the lower hemisphere. The second subset, isomorphic to R1, corresponds to the green line without the two marked points, or, again, equivalently the light green line. Finally we have the red point or the equivalent light red point. We thus have a disjoint decomposition P2 R equals R2 R1 point, intuitively, and made precise below, R1 point is itself the real projective line P1 R. Considered as a subset of P2 R, it is called line at infinity, whereas R2 P2 R is called affine plane, i.e., just the usual plane. The next objective is to make the saying, parallel lines meet at infinity. Precise. A natural bijection between the plane Z. Topic one, which meets the sphere at the north pole n. Zero, zero, one, and the sphere of the projective plane is accomplished by the gnomonic projection. Each point p on this plane is mapped to the two intersection points of the sphere with the line through its center and p these two points are identified in the projective plane. Lines blue in the plane are mapped to great circles if one also includes one pair of antipodal points on the equator. Any two great circles intersect precisely in two antipodal points identified in the projective plane. Great circles corresponding to parallel lines intersect on the equator. So any two lines have exactly one intersection point inside P2 R. This phenomenon is axiomatized in projective geometry. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Definition of projective space. The real projective space of dimension n or projective n space, Pn R, is roughly the set of the lines in R n plus 1 passing through the origin. For defining it as a topological space and as an algebraic variety it is better to define it as the quotient space of R n plus 1 by the equivalence relation, to be aligned with the origin. More precisely, Pn R. Rn plus 1 0, tilde, where tilde is the equivalence relation defined by, x0 xn, tilde y0 un if there is a non-zero real number lambda such that x0 xn lambda y0 lambda un the elements of the projective space are commonly called points. The projective coordinates of a point P are x0 xn, where x0 xn is any element of the corresponding equivalence class. This is denoted P equals x0 xn, the colons and the brackets emphasizing that the right-hand side is an equivalence class, which is defined up to the multiplication by a non-zero constant. Instead of R, one may take any field, or even a division ring, K. In these cases it is common to use the notation Pg n, K for Pn K. If K is a finite field of order Q, the notation is further simplified to Pg n, Q. Taking the complex numbers or the quaternions, one obtains the complex projective space Pn C and quaternionic projective space Pn H. If n is 1 or 2, it is also called projective line or projective plane, respectively. The complex projective line is also called the Riemann sphere. Slightly more generally, for a vector space V over some field K, or even more generally a module V over some division ring, P v is defined as V0, tilde, where two non-zero vectors V1, V2 in V are equivalent if they differ by a non-zero scalar lambda, i.e. V1 equals lambda v2 the vector space need not be finite dimensional thus for example there is the theory of projective hilbert spaces equals topic projective space as a manifold equals 
The above definition of projective space gives a set. For purposes of differential geometry, which deals with manifolds, it is useful to endow this set with a real or complex manifold structure. Namely, identifying a point of the projective space with its homogeneous coordinates, consider the following subsets of the projective space. U I equals x 0 x n x i does not equal 0 i equals 0 n display style u underscore i equals x underscore 0 c d o t s x underscore n x underscore i n e q 0 quad i equals 0 dots n by the definition of projective space the union is the whole projective space Furthermore, UE is in bijection with Rn or Cn via the following maps: x zero, x n, x zero, x i, x i, x i, carrot, x n, x I display style x underscore zero c d o t s x underscore n mapsto left frac x underscore zero x underscore i dots wide hat frac x underscore i x underscore i dots frac x underscore n x underscore i right y zero y i minus one one Y I plus one Y N Y zero Y I carrot Y N Display style y underscore zero c d o t s y underscore i one one y underscore i plus one c d o t s y underscore n left arrow left y underscore zero dots wide hat y underscore i dots y underscore n right. The hat means that the i t h entry is missing. The example image shows p one r. Antipodal points are identified in p one r though. It is covered by two copies of the real line R, each of which covers the projective line except one point, which is the or a point at infinity. We first define a topology on projective space by declaring that these maps shall be homeomorphisms, that is, a subset of UE is open IFF. Its image under the above isomorphism is an open subset in the usual sense of Rn. An arbitrary subset A of Pn R is open if all intersections of UE are open. This defines a topological space. The manifold structure is given by the above maps, too. Another way to think about the projective line is the following, take two copies of the affine line with coordinates x and y, respectively, and glue them together along the subsets x does not equal 0 and y does not equal 0 via the maps x one x y one y display style x mapsto frac one x y mapsto frac one y. The resulting manifold is the projective line. The charts given by this construction are the same as the ones above. Similar presentations exist for higher dimensional projective spaces. The above decomposition in disjoint subsets reads in this generality: P n R equals R n R n minus one. Display style C D O T S R one R zero. This so-called cell decomposition can be used to calculate the singular cohomology of projective space. All of the above holds for complex projective space too. The complex projective line P one C is an example of a Riemann surface. Topic: Projective spaces in algebraic geometry. 
The covering by the above open subsets also shows that projective space is an algebraic variety or scheme, it is covered by n plus 1 affine n spaces. The construction of a projective scheme is an instance of the project construction. <laughs> projective spaces in algebraic topology Real projective n space has a quite straightforward CW complex structure where Pn R is obtained from Pn1 by attaching an n cell with the quotient projection Sn1 Pn1 R as the attaching map. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Projective space and affine space. There are some advantages of the projective space compared with affine space e.g., Pn R versus an R. For these reasons it is important to know when a given manifold or variety is projective, i.e., embeds into is a closed subset of projective space. Very ample line bundles are designed to tackle this question. Note that a projective space can be formed by the projectivization of a vector space, as lines through the origin, but cannot be formed from an affine space without a choice of base point. That is, affine spaces are open subspaces of projective spaces, which are quotients of vector spaces. Projective space is a compact topological space, affine space is not. Therefore, Liouville's theorem applies to show that every holomorphic function on Pn C is constant. Another consequence is, for example, that integration of functions or differential forms on Pn does not cause convergence issues. On a projective complex manifold X, cohomology groups of coherent sheaves are finitely generated. The above example is H0 Pn C O, the zeroth cohomology of the sheaf of holomorphic functions O. In the parlance of algebraic geometry, projective space is proper. The above results hold in this context, too. For complex projective space, every complex submanifold X Pn C, i.e., a manifold cut out by holomorphic equations, is necessarily an algebraic variety, i.e., given by polynomial equations. This is Chow's theorem, it allows the direct use of algebraic geometric methods for these ad hoc analytically defined objects. As outlined above, lines in P2 or more generally hyperplanes in Pn always do intersect. This extends to nonlinear objects, as well, appropriately defining the degree of an algebraic curve, which is roughly the degree of the polynomials needed to define the curve see Hilbert polynomial, it is true over an algebraically closed field K that any two projective curves C1, C2 Pn K of degree E and F intersect in exactly F points, counting them with multiplicities see Bezout's theorem. This is applied, for example, in defining a group structure on the points of an elliptic curve, like Y2. Topic x3 minus x plus 1. The degree of an elliptic curve is 3. Consider the line x 1, which intersects the curve inside affine space exactly twice, namely in 1, 1 and 1, minus 1. However, inside P2, the projective closure of the curve is given by the homogeneous equation Y2Z. Topic x3 minus xz2 plus z3, which intersects the line given inside P2 by x z in three points, 1, 1 to 1, 1, minus 1 to 1, corresponding to the two points mentioned above, and 0, 1 to 0. Any projective group variety, i.e., a projective variety, whose points form an abstract group, is necessarily an abelian variety. Elliptic curves are examples for abelian varieties. The commutativity fails for non-projective group varieties, as the example GLN K, the general linear group, shows. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Axioms for projective space. 
A projective space S can be defined axiomatically as a set P, the set of points, together with a set L of subsets of P, the set of lines, satisfying these axioms. Each two distinct points P and Q are in exactly one line. Veblen's axiom, if A, B, C, D are distinct points and the lines through AB and CD meet, then so do the lines through AC and BD. Any line has at least three points on it. The last axiom eliminates reducible cases that can be written as a disjoint union of projective spaces together with two point lines joining any two points in distinct projective spaces. More abstractly, it can be defined as an incidence structure P, L, I, consisting of a set P of points, a set L of lines, and an incidence relation I that states which points lie on which lines. The structures defined by these axioms are more general than those obtained from the vector space construction given above. If the projective dimension is at least 3 then, by the Veblen–Young theorem, there is no difference. However, for dimension 2, there are examples that satisfy these axioms that can not be constructed from vector spaces or even modules over division rings. These examples do not satisfy the theorem of de Sargs and are known as non-Desargusian planes. In dimension 1, any set with at least three elements satisfies the axioms, so it is usual to assume additional structure for projective lines defined axiomatically. It is possible to avoid the troublesome cases in low dimensions by adding or modifying axioms that define a projective space. Coxeter 1969, p. 231, gives such an extension due to Bartman. To ensure that the dimension is at least 2, replace the 3 point per line axiom above by There exist 4 points, no 3 of which are collinear. To avoid the non Desargusian planes, include Pappus's theorem as an axiom. If the 6 vertices of a hexagon lie alternately on 2 lines, the 3 points of intersection of pairs of opposite sides are collinear, and, to ensure that the vector space is defined over a field that does not have even characteristic, include Fano's axiom. The three diagonal points of a complete quadrangle are never collinear. A subspace of the projective space is a subset X, such that any line containing two points of X is a subset of X, that is, completely contained in X. The full space and the empty space are always subspaces. The geometric dimension of the space is said to be n if that is the largest number for which there is a strictly ascending chain of subspaces of this form. Equals x minus 1 x 0 x n equals p display style var nothing equals x underscore minus 1 subset x underscore 0 subset c d o t s x underscore n equals p a subspace x i display style x underscore I in such a chain is said to have geometric dimension I display style I subspaces of dimension 0 are called points those of dimension 1 are called lines and so on if the full space has dimension n display style n then any subspace of dimension n minus 1 display style n1 is called a hyperplane topic classification dimension 0 no lines the space is a single point dimension 1 exactly one line all points lie on the unique line dimension 2 there are at least two lines and any two lines meet a projective space for n equals 2 is equivalent to a projective plane these are much harder to classify, as not all of them are isomorphic with a PG D, K. The Desargusian planes those that are isomorphic with a PG 2, K, satisfy Desargus theorem and are projective planes over division rings, but there are many non-Desargusian planes. Dimension at least three, two non-intersecting lines exist. Veblen and Young proved the Veblen–Young theorem that every projective space of dimension n3 is isomorphic with a pg n, k, the n-dimensional projective space over some division ring k. <laughs> 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 
Finite projective spaces and planes A finite projective space is a projective space where P is a finite set of points. In any finite projective space, each line contains the same number of points and the order of the space is defined as one less than this common number. For finite projective spaces of dimension at least 3, Wedderburn's theorem implies that the division ring over which the projective space is defined must be a finite field GF Q whose order that is number of elements is Q a prime power. A finite projective space defined over such a finite field has Q plus 1 points on a line, so the two concepts of order coincide. Notationally, PG n GF Q is usually written as PG n Q. All finite fields of the same order are isomorphic, so, up to isomorphism, there is only one finite projective space for each dimension greater than or equal to 3, over a given finite field. However, in dimension 2 there are non disargusian planes. Up to isomorphism there are 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 4, 0, sequence A001231 in the OEIS finite projective planes of orders 2, 3, 4, 10, respectively. The numbers beyond this are very difficult to calculate and are not determined except for some zero values due to the Bruck Riser theorem. The smallest projective plane is the Fano plane, PG 2, 2, with seven points and seven lines. The smallest three-dimensional projective spaces is PG 3, 2, with 15 points, 35 lines and 15 planes. <laughs> Morphisms Injective linear maps T element of L v, w between two vector spaces V and W over the same field K induce mappings of the corresponding projective spaces P v, P w via v, T v, where V is a non-zero element of V and denotes the equivalence classes of a vector under the defining identification of the respective projective spaces. Since members of the equivalence class differ by a scalar factor, and linear maps preserve scalar factors, this induced map is well defined. If T is not injective, it has a null space larger than 0, in this case the meaning of the class of T v is problematic if V is non-zero and in the null space. In this case one obtains a so-called rational map, see also birational geometry. Two linear maps S and T in L v, w induce the same map between P v and P w if and only if they differ by a scalar multiple, that is if T equals λ S for some λ does not equal zero. Thus if one identifies the scalar multiples of the identity map with the underlying field K, the set of K linear morphisms from P v to P w is simply P L v w. The automorphisms P v, P v can be described more concretely. We deal only with automorphisms preserving the base field K. Using the notion of sheaves generated by global sections, it can be shown that any algebraic not necessarily linear automorphism must be linear, i.e., coming from a linear automorphism of the vector space V the latter form the group GL v. By identifying maps that differ by a scalar, one concludes that a U T P V Topic A U T V K times G L V K times equals P G L V the quotient group of G L V modulo the matrices that are scalar multiples of the identity. These matrices form the center of A U T V, the groups P G L are called projective linear groups. The automorphisms of the complex projective line P1 C are called Mobius transformations. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Dual projective space. When the construction above is applied to the dual space V rather than V, one obtains the dual projective space, which can be canonically identified with the space of hyperplanes through the origin of V that is, if V is n-dimensional, then P is the Grassmannian of n-1 planes in V. 
In algebraic geometry, this construction allows for greater flexibility in the construction of projective bundles. One would like to be able to associate a projective space to every quasi-coherent sheaf E over a scheme Y, not just the locally free ones. CEGAII, CHAP. 2, PAR. 4 For more details. Generalizations Dimension The projective space, being the «space» of all one-dimensional linear subspaces of a given vector space V is generalized to Grassmannian manifold, which is parametrizing higher dimensional subspaces of some fixed dimension of V Sequence of subspaces more generally flag manifold is the space of flags, i.e., chains of linear subspaces of V Other subvarieties Even more generally, moduli spaces parametrize objects such as elliptic curves of a given kind Other rings Generalizing to associative rings rather than only fields yields, for example, the projective line over a ring. Patching Patching projective spaces together yields projective space bundles. Severi Brouwer varieties are algebraic varieties over a field K, which become isomorphic to projective spaces after an extension of the base field K. Another generalization of projective spaces are weighted projective spaces, these are themselves special cases of toric varieties. See also Generalizations Grassmannian manifold Projective line over a ring Space mathematics. Projective geometry Projective transformation Projective representation Topic related Geometric algebra equals equals notes. <laughs>